Good morning, Cowboy Jim up here in uh, in the tar sands of northern Alberta, uh, where we're cleaning up the world's greatest natural oil spill known to mankind. Some of the mines up here, you, you only have about five foot of overburden that you have to skim off uh, before you're in the sand. That is just black with oil. And the big trucks, when they, when it's in the summer, uh, those big trucks go down the hall road and, uh, they, they carry 465 or 435 ton, uh, before they overload. Huge, massive, um, uh, little tiny tandem dump truck going down the highway carries 12 ton. Okay. So, I mean, these things are, they're, they're actually about the same size as a small uh, two-story house, okay? A little bigger in some cases, nonetheless. Just wanted to say that. Okay. This is the first day of the week. This is... Um, the day that everybody um, celebrates uh, who chooses to believe in God and in his son. The rest don't celebrate. Well, they probably did it last night or Saturday night, but that's okay. You live your life. I live mine. I won't pick on you. Don't pick on me. Hey, you can pick on me a little. I could care less. Okay. Don't step on my toes. You won't like the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I went out to my big dodge uh, yesterday. Hey, oh, she's a big girl, and uh, oh, I I could have lifted her up another six or eight inches, but I would have needed a step ladder to climb into the big girl, and uh, oh, I would never be able to to get up there with a broken shoulder. I mean, it's a real challenge to. Uh, to get myself in, into that dodge, like it's easy for me to stretch and so on because I do that all the time. So for me to lift my foot up and and lodge it in uh, the corner of the door um, door frame and and then just kind of lean into the seat and and I just lift my body up into place. It's a challenge. I mean. Uh, left arm doesn't work at all. Only way that it's going to uh, heal properly is if I don't use it. Otherwise, I'd be using it. And it would take longer to heal. When it healed, well, it'd probably be a better joint. Uh, uh, but the way it is, it's going to turn out okay. Anyways, got myself up into the big dodge and... Uh, Went to put the key in the stupid ignition. And I looked, and there was a note under my windshield wiper. And I thought, okay, can I stand in the doorway of my truck and reach um, behind me kind of on my right and extricate that note from my wiper? I thought, yeah, probably fall right on my head. <laughs> so I thought, okay, let's start the big girl. So um, I have what is called a wabaso, uh on, on my dodge because uh, Cummins, they, uh, they're they kind of like my last wife. You weren't sure if she were going to start or not, and uh, you weren't sure how she is going to behave after she did start and uh, so on. Not denigrating the woman. She did kill my horse. So I'm not lifting her up either. And uh, But nonetheless, it's the way it is. So I got the big truck started. And I thought, I wonder if I could drive all the way downtown to the bank and then to the grocery store and not lose the note. And I thought, that's not happening. I am going to have to get my sorry Irish buns 
out of the blessed big truck. I'm going to have to take a look at that note because it's important to me. Because I didn't know what it said. Anyways, I climbed out of the truck. I got the note. I kind of looked at it. There was a guy's name. I, 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 um, I just, it, perhaps the ink was a bit not, not too distinct or something. I don't know. I couldn't read his name. I read the phone number. And, uh, and so I, I put the note back up on the console and, and, uh, I, uh, I got my, buns back up in the truck and sucked air for a couple of minutes and just it's been a little while since I broke anything I think the last thing that I broke was my right hand and I had it crushed three times uh, the last time um, uh, I I got it caught in a bus store and work and uh, I told them at work I said I'm not going on compensation eh? I said I'm not uh, give me a ride to the hospital I'll get a, an x-ray but the only reason I do that is to see how many bones are broken I said I'll be back to work tomorrow night and uh, they did they were nice they, they were pretty insistent you should really make a WCB claim because who knows what's going to happen to your hand in the future and I thought, it's nothing's going to happen to my hand that God doesn't approve. And if he approves what happens to my hand, he'll give me the way of dealing with it. Anyways, a doctor at that time, he said, uh, oh, and hey, doctors really love me. Because hey, Irish people are at warfare against gravity. Gravity always wins. Just saying. It's the way it is. The doctor at the time, he said, uh, how'd you mush your hand? I told him. I said, I'm not going on compensation, son. I said, okay. And um, um, the nurse, she uh, put the x-ray up for him to look at. And I, I looked at it. I counted nine bones in an inch, inch and a half circle on my the middle of the back of my hand that were broken. I was pretty sure the tenth one was too, but she she saw that I was watching, and I mean, if she knew how many broken bones I'd had, how many X-rays I'd looked at, she probably left it on for me. But it's really strange. People in authority, they just go beyond their authority. I mean, they have to because they're pretty inadequate in their own lives, and so they implement other people behaving as they think in order to implement making them feel good about themselves. That wonderful doctor, he was so good. Um, uh, he said, you need anything for pain? I said, no. I said, if I took anything for pain, it'd be a T3. I said, but I don't want anything. I said, you need to do anything with that? He said, no, can't even wrap it. Just suck it up. I said, hey, I, I've been doing that all my life. Hey, I know how to do that. And uh, uh, I was staying in, uh, uh, sharing an apartment with three other people. Uh, one was the young guy who insisted on carrying my lunchbox and he tampered with my food. And Oh, he stole my handgun that was legal and he stole two crossbows and Oh, a big thing of tools out of the truck, my truck, and blew the blessed engine in my truck. Drained the oil out when I went down to Athabasca to visit him. And so anyways, he uh, confronted me in the morning. 
He said, did you break your hand? I said, yeah. He said, what did you get for, for pain? I said, nothing. I don't do pain. He said, what? I said, I don't need pain pills. He said, you need pain pills. I, he's a big fat boy. I said, well, I, I don't. He said, I am taking you back to the hospital. And you are going to go into a merge. And you're going to tell that doctor who x-rayed you yesterday and all that stuff. You're going to tell that doctor that you lied to him. And I thought, you arrogant piece of human dung. Uh, but he was a big boy. My hand was broken. It, it hurt a bit. And uh, he said, get ready. We're going. See, uh, when a person is uh, an elder abuser, actually, when a person is an abuser of anyone, they have this uh, mistaken but some supposed belief system that they own you. They control you. That fat boy used to tell me how to breathe because he thought he had drugged me so long that, and I, and I had lost my mind as well, am I dead? And um, he just, he was like that. So anyways, uh, I, we, we went to the hospital. Okay, just trying to move my shoulder a little bit so it doesn't hurt quite so much. And um, that didn't help. And uh, so we went back to the hospital. Uh, w we got the same surgeon uh, in Emerge. He is such a nice guy. I, I, I thought, I, I know how to deal with this. I'm just going to walk in and tell him, you know, a dummy out there is insisting that I ask for Percocets. I had told the doctor, he, he had asked me the day before, you want some perks? I said, no, I don't like those things. They're way too strong. And um, I, I said, and I'm working tonight or tomorrow night, tomorrow night. I'll probably take a day off. I'll, I'll work tomorrow night. And um, I, uh, I, I can't be on drugs and drive truck too. It can't do it. And uh, so I said, I don't need anything. So this time he brought me in and, and uh, the fat boy, um, he came right along with us. Didn't he need drugs to get high? And he insisted on Percocets probably because every other thing that he had tried for years uh, for pain he gotten used to them. Okay, so the doctor's standing in front of me, and I'm standing between the fat boy uh, who tried to destroy my life and my testimony. He and his wife wanted to get me booked into a mental institution so they could take care of me for the rest of my life. <laughs> Can you believe it would have been a short life on my part? But anyways, uh, doctor's looking at me and I'm looking at him and the doctor said to the whatever, I don't know what you'd call him, evil person behind me. He said, uh, don't you just love Jim? And the evil person said, oh yeah, he didn't love me. He hated me. He despised me. The doctor loved me because the doctor and I had talked about the Lord and uh, my son's miracle, all those things. So I'm making this serious eye contact with the doctor. And I said, uh, I hurt quite a bit. And I kind of made a half nod behind me to where that drug addict was who ran equipment in the mine while he was stoned. And uh, and um, I said, is there any way you could give me Percocets for the pain? 
when the doctor and I we stared into each other's eyes. He said, no, Jim, I can't. I smile. I did this big smile. I said, thank you. Thank you. I don't know if the doctor caught on to the fact that the guy who had tried to destroy my life behind me was uh, uh, the one who really wanted the, the drugs. doesn't matter. The Lord has told me that I, I move on from that. I'm not dwelling on it. I'm, I'm not. And I don't even know how I got here from where I started. But I do. Um, when I got back in the truck, um, hey, the doctor didn't give me anything. I, I, did, I, he, I didn't want anything. I was just taking the easiest way out to get around the drug addict who worked on the same crew as I did, lived in the same apartment, all that stuff. And um, that doctor, I, I was so proud of him. And I smiled about this big when he said he couldn't give me anything for pain. I didn't want anything. It wasn't for me. It was for the idiot behind me. And uh, um, But anyways, so I got back up in the big Dodge and I, I read the note and Big girl was uh, blowing blue smoke as she does when she takes a few minutes to warm up and then she gets better. And I thought, uh, uh, I'm, I'm just, anyways, I read the note and the guy said, um, could you please give me a call? And I couldn't get a clear read on his signature. I don't know his name. But anyways, I called them, I left a message. I said, brother, um, you need to call me. Uh, then this is my number. The number I gave him was my number, 403-816-5696. And um, if, you, if you want to text me from anywhere in the world, don't call me, dear Lord. I mean, I'm not even working now. I, I I will be, but hey, it's going to be a while till there's a payday. And uh, but if you need to text someone to ask um, for prayer or for anything else that that I can do for you, please do. Okay, and uh, that's exactly what I told the 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 man who wrote the note on on my truck uh, on on a piece of paper, full scap. Um, torn out of a ringed binder type thing. And so I called them, but there was no answer, but he could well be working. And not only that, he, he may have changed his mind, but he said, he called me Jim. Well, Cowboy Jim is written on the back of my truck and uh, that's the way it is. And so um, end result, uh, he hasn't called yet, but if, if you, uh, who wrote that note, uh, are listening to, and I believe you'll be listening and watching my YouTube channel, please call me. Um, I, I, I never reveal names nor nothing else. I, people tell me stuff because they know I won't tell someone else. Okay? They trust me. They trust me to honor God by honoring their anonymity, their... Uh, right uh, to be themselves. So, you're around the world. Uh, hey, if any of you uh, are abused, remember this, okay? Child abuse, um, marital abuse, elder abuse, whatever abuse. Remember this, God loves you. It's not your fault when you're abused. Oh, I was so hard on myself. Eh? I mean, I, that man tampered with my food for four months, insisted on carrying my lunch bucket into work. 
and uh, it was a hot lunch bucket. That means uh, you plug it into the lighter and you had a hot meal. It was wonderful. And uh, he would drop me off at the front door of the uh, uh, Suncor Main uh, mine. And uh, he would say he was going to go talk to his wife. Well, I don't know what she was. Well, I think she was just as corrupt and evil as he was, is. And anyways, I would do that. And I was so hard on myself because I, I, I thought, how could I have allowed someone to get to the place where they thought they owned me. And I thought, when God finally told me, don't eat anything that that man touches, comes near or carries, don't drink anything. And he, he said, don't eat what he carries in to work. I quit bringing her lunch. I quit eating virtually, almost virtually. And uh, I just didn't trust him at all because God indicated that he had been poisoning me. And and I thought, you know, then I'll quit eating. When I did, I started to have a miraculous cure. It took a long time. Um, I bet six, six weeks to two months um I was having flashbacks that were debilitating. I mean, totally. And then it took six months to nine months until I stopped having sporadic uh, flashbacks. My fingernails changed overnight. They started to grow in with striated lines that were, I had never had fingernails like that ever in my life. Oh, it was so funny. No one at work believed anything I said. Oh, they always tell you, uh, oh, if you're being abused, threatened or whatever, uh, go to the supervisor, tell them, hey, supervisors didn't believe a word I said. Head guy, working for that company, didn't believe anything I said. Not because I'd lied, but because it was an inconvenient truth. Can you imagine if a company um, had someone working for them who was as that guy was to me and trying to take over my life? The company's responsibility would be expanded. And they, they, they had to um, choose whether they believe me or not. It, it was so funny. Um, after I quit taking the drugs or eating my meals that the drugs had been put into, uh, in their, that company's foyer, that, that boy, had followed me all across. I'd gotten off the bus, was walking uh, to the doorway. That, that, that less than a man, uh, evil person, followed me, and he just beat the hell out of me in uh, the foyer. And I had, I had been talking to God for about six weeks, and I said, you know, I'm pretty sure he's going to... Uh, uh, beat me. I said, do you think that I could take a beating and not say anything and not raise a hand in self-defense? God assured me that, that I could. I said, I need you, God, to do me a favor, okay? If you do this favor for me, I think I can I can pull this off. See, I'd been taught uh, to do martial arts, uh, judo, the gentle sport. Um, I fought in the Canadian Championship in judo in Toronto uh, 
in 1970. Whoa, the joy of getting older. And uh, I told the Lord, I said, if you could keep that man from punching me in the face, not because I'm pretty. Uh, I said, if, if you can keep him from doing a direct punch so that I can't see it coming or so that I can see it coming, um, I will react. Eh? I will take my thumb and I'll put it so far into his Adam's apple that he'll die. I said, I will. I, it's, it's my natural response. See, it's, I mean, you're being attacked. Uh, fat boy was 34. Uh, I, I think I was 71 at the time. Um, he outweighed me, uh, 60 pounds, maybe more. And, uh, cause when he first started drugging me, I, I, I weighed just about 200 pounds, uh, Six weeks later, I was down to less than 160 pounds. I remember one of my supervisors, a nice guy, he said, Jim, you're losing too much weight. I said, I, I don't know what's happening to the weight. I, I, I didn't know what was happening to anything. I mean, I was so stoned from stuff that that man was putting in my food. I, I didn't have a clue. Okay. God allowed me to be beaten without seeing the punch come. That's good. Hey, those things are behind me. Oh, I remind myself every now and again because I don't want to be that stupid again. I don't want to feel guilt um, because someone is taking advantage of a of, of me. I feel so sorry for the people in the world who have been abused, are being abused, whether they're children or teenagers or um, mature uh, wives of violent, violent men uh, or elders, elderly people who are injured, hurt by abusers who uh, fulfill um, the work of their father, Satan, in abusing anyone over anything. It's wrong. One of the regrets I have uh, of being drugged was I did not realize that I could go uh, when I finally realized what he was doing and I finally quit eating the food. I didn't know that I could go to a medical uh, practitioner and have blood taken and determine what kind of drugs that the lady was getting from her psychiatric uh, friend, who in turn she gave to her husband, who in turn um, embedded the drugs in my food, which caused me to lose my mind. Do you know something? I'm so glad that God allowed me to go through that because that won't ever happen again because of what God taught me in that experience. I am cognitive, aware, attentive. That won't happen again. And every time that you get scammed, it's good for you. Hopefully you don't lose too much money when people do that sort of stuff. I lost $11,000 to replace the engine and transmission in my big Dodge when that guy blew the engine by draining the oil. I lost $7,000 worth of guns, uh, crossbow, all those things, tools, all those things. That's not happening again. Perhaps that might be a small um, price to pay for such lessons as I have learned. And I have learned them. And um, I ask for God to protect me. He does. To build a hedge of thorns around about me. He does. But I trust God. And I do. 
I encourage you to trust God. Uh, the young man that left a note in uh, my truck window uh, under the wiper blade, please call me. Um, I I returned his call and I left my phone number. So when he's off work, I'm sure he will, when he's ready. Um, if you uh, need to text, uh, ask me anything you want, 403 Eight one six five six nine six. Y'all just give me a, a text. That's good. In the meantime, you're going to live until you die. I hope you have learned to understand that God loves you, that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for you. God will take you through unbelievable stuff and he will protect you. He will let you experience some very bad things, but as long as you remember the joy of learning, um, it's kind of like that guy that said, you never believe in a God who allows such evil to be perpetrated against children by evil people. Well, God lets us all learn from our life's experiences because God created Satan that we would have a choice to choose between good and evil. I choose God. I have never been disappointed in God and what he has done in my life. Oh, there have been times I would like the situation to have turned out differently, but God sees way beyond what we do. He has a plan. It'll work. God bless you. You all take care. Thank you. Amen and amen.